Hey everyone, this is Bremster, and today I'm coming to you with a puzzle called Directions in the Dark by Rockrat Zero. Um, this is a fog Sudoku, and I don't think I've done one of these in a while, so this will be a bit interesting. Um, also on the channel at the moment, I need to thank a new patron, DJV. Thank you for jumping on board, um, especially at this time when I'm not putting out as much content as I used to. Um, I've been doing a lot of streaming on Bremster Games, kind of for my own thing. Um, I know I'm not doing the normal content level that I used to. I've kind of... <sighs> With my father's passing, I came to a realization I spent a lot of time on the channel over the last 12 months and didn't spend enough time on myself or my family. Um, and I needed to I, I need to refocus and figure out what's going on. I mean, I spent a lot of time at the theater last year um, and I'm still kind of doing that. But um, so you know, there was that. But I need to sort of refigure out what I'm doing. Um, but I do want to keep the channel content going. So don't worry, I'm not disappearing. Anyway, um, Thank you, DJV, for jumping on board, and we'll see what happens with other stuff. So, how does this work? Normal Sudoku rules apply. So, in each um, box, in each row, and in each column, the digits 1 to 9 must be placed without repetition. This is a fog puzzle. So, as we place digits into the grid, um, well, we can't see what clues are hidden underneath the fog. But um, as we place digits, say we will place a digit here... All of the cells that are adjacent to that will get revealed. Um, so we will be able to uh, figure out, um, well, we will reveal clues as we go. Um, so separate, now, digits in cages must sum to the number in the top left corner of the cage. Um, so uh, normal killer rules. Uh, cells separated by an X must sum to 10. We can't see any of the Xs, but they'll be here. And cells separated by a V must sum to 5. So if there's an X separating these two cells, they would sum to 10. If there was a V, they would sum to 5. Not all Xs and Vs are given. So if there's no X or no V, they could still sum to 5 or 10. Um, we uh, we just know that if they are separated by an X or a V, what they will sum to. Some cells contain diagonal arrows. The arrows point to a digit in the diagonally adjacent cell. That digit will be found on the indicated diagonal in all boxes in that direction. I'm not sure how to read that. So some cells will contain diagonal arrows. So if this has an arrow pointing in, say, this direction, then... Say, say there was an arrow here pointing in this direction. This would be the diagonally adjacent cell, and it will be found on each box in here. So if there was an arrow here pointing this way, this cell would have to appear in all three of those boxes, I think is the way that's reading. Figure it out as we go. I'm going to restart the puzzle to restart my timer. Let's give this a shot. Now, a 17 cage can only be filled out one way. There's only two way to make it, one way to make it up without repeats in Sudoku digits, 8, 9. 16 can only be 7, 9, and because 9 has to be here, this has to be the 8, and this has to be the 9. Okay, so here's an arrow, but it's not a diagonal arrow. Oh, this would be an X. So this is a 12 cage that can't have an 8 or a 9, so this is 5 or 7, but this is an X clue. Looks like an arrow, but it's not. This is an X clue. So this is the seven, this is the five, and this is the three. And here is a diagonal arrow. So this digit, this digit, and this digit must be the same. This is a four cage. And it can't be more than two cells. So these are one and three. This is the one, this is the three. This is a 15. And this, so this is either six, nine, or seven, eight, but this can't be seven or eight. So this is six, this is nine. This is an 11 that can't contain 6 or 9. So it's 3, 8 or 4, 7. Now, this digit, this digit, so this is pointing, so let's go through the arrow again. Some cells contain diagonal arrows. The arrows point to a digit in the diagonally adjacent cell. So that one. That digit will be found on the indicated diagonal in all boxes in that direction. So this must be a 1. There must be a 1 in one of those two, and this must be a 1. Now, if this is a 1, this is a 7. If this is a 1, this is a 4. Okay. If this is a 4, that could be more than a two-cell 12 cage. Now this, if this is a one, this would have to be a one. So if this was, right, so this can't be a one, because if this was a one, 
digit would be found on the indicator diagonal. If this was a one, then we would need to put a one on the indicator diagonal in all of those boxes, and this would have to be a one. This is not the one, this is the one, which means this is a four. This four means this is an eight. This is actually kind of weird. And these arrow, whoa. So this has to, the digit that appears here has to appear on this indicated diagonal in all boxes. So this has to be a five. And then I have to put a five on the indicated diagonal in this box. This is nuts. Not sure why you wouldn't put it that the arrow is the digit on the thing. And then the digit placed on the arrow has to appear on the, I think that would have been easier. People would have found it easier to scan. Because then you could say the digit placed on the arrow must appear on the indicated diagonal in every box rather than adjacent to. I think that would have been an easier way to do this. I'm not sure why it wasn't. Possibly because of the fog and the need to hide the arrows. So this is a five cage. So it can only be two cells. So it's either one, four, or three, two. Because you can't have a three cell five cage. Now I need to put a five on in each box on the indicator diagonal. No, no, it's whatever this is. Well, this can't be one seven. It could be two six. So this is two six or three. But if this is a three, this would have to be a three. So this is not three. So this is a two six. And this is a two six. And this is a two six. And there's a two or a six in here as well. But that means this is a four and this is a one. This 13, but this could be more than two cells. So I don't know about that. This is very weird. This is a V clue and it's not one four because there's a one here. So this is a two, three. Now, if this is a two, this is a nine. So this is three and eight and two. So this 14, if it's five, nine, it's nine and five. If it's six, it can't be six, eight, because I can't put either six or eight. So this is five and nine. This is a 15 clue without a nine. So it is seven, eight. And there's an eight here. So this is the seven, this is the eight. The nine here makes this seven and this nine. This is really cool, but very odd. So this arrow is done. So I'm going to shade it. This arrow is not done. This arrow is done. This digit has to appear in one of those three cells. What can this be? It can't be one, two. It can be three, four. It can't be five, six, three, four, or seven. If it's seven, that has to be a seven. That's okay. If it's three, that has to be a three. No, if this is three, I'd have to put three in one of those. And I can't put three there by Sudoku and I can't put three there because it'll make that a seven. So this is not three, it's four or seven. If it's four, I put four in one of those two. That's okay. Oh no, there's a four here. This is a seven. And now this is a seven. And this arrow clue, is done. Now this is a seven and I have to put a seven in one of those three, but not there or there. So this is a seven. And this arrow clue is done. So what arrow clues are not done might be worth marking now. So this is not done. And I think that's it. This needs to be done. So two, six, so this, this, and this are all the same digit and must go into one of those. This can't be two or six, because if this is two, this is eight, and if it's six, this is four. So this is two or six and is yellow. And this is a two cell 13 cage. So this is six and this is seven. So yellow is six. And all of these clues are now done. 
So six goes with two. And now I'm just down to Sudoku. It's a very cool concept. I mean, it's possibly the shortest puzzle I've ever done on my channel. One, two, three, four, five, nine. Well, there's no nine up here. So this is the nine. This five makes this four and this five. These are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And there's no one there. So this becomes the one. The two four is resolved by two and four. This is one, two, three, four, five, and seven. There's a seven there. So this is two and this is seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's no six in either of those. So this is the six. This eight means this is the nine and this is the eight. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And there's a four here. So this is the six and this is the four. These are now one, two, and three. This is the one by Sudoku because I've got ones already in box four and box seven. And this column needs a two and a three. And the two here means this is three, this is two, this is three. Um, trying to find the weakest, where is the weakest link? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's no five here. There's no nine here. There's no nine here. So I can stick a nine in the middle. Um, so these two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And the eight here means this is two and this is eight. Now I need to put a high digit on this. So this now has to be one nine because I can't use two, eight, three, seven, or four, six. So this is one nine, and the nine here means this is the one, and this is the nine. Uh, this is a triple, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's no four there. In fact, there's no three in either of these. So this is five. This is These are not five. The four here means this is three, and this is four. This is a pair, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This two means this is three, and this is two. This is one, two, th and four, and I'll use that one to make that four and that one. This is really flowing well. One, two, three, four, five, six, and I'll use that six to make this three and this six. Um, this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'll use that five to make it two and five. This is now a pair. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, four and nine, that nine, four and nine. This is a triple one. Ah, this five made this eight ages ago. So this became five. And these are one, two, three, four, two and seven. And I'll use that seven, two and seven. Uh, this is one, two, three, four, five, and eight. I'll use that five to make this eight and this five. And now I'm down to the final box. Three can only go there. I need to place a four, which has to go there. I need to place a six, which goes there. And I need to place an eight, which goes there. 10 minutes and one. Palindrobic solve time. 10 minutes and one second. Really short puzzle, but a very, very cool one with some interesting concepts. I'm assuming the arrows were done that way because the um, because of the um, the fog would have revealed arrows in the wrong positions if the arrows were done um, on the on the cell, um, which is fine. I mean, you need to play around with your constraints and everything to make the puzzle have good flow. And that one had some good flow. This is a, a nice approachable puzzle with a new constraint, uh, with a different, or not new, I'm sure. I may have seen something like this before, but with a differing constraint idea. That's a very, very cool one. Um, because I hadn't seen the constraint and I didn't understand how it worked, I listed it in the rules as arrow variant. It's not an arrow variant. Um, I'm not sure what I should have called it. Um, so I might fix that up for the description of the video um, and for the tracking sheet. We'll see how that goes. Thank you everyone for watching. Thank you Rockrate Zero for the puzzle. That was a lot of fun. Um, something I could knock out. I was, I've been trying to find some more challenging puzzles, but I've had some recently that people have submitted that I think are nearly five star puzzles. And I'm, I'm not up to five star puzzles at the moment. Normally I'm not at all. But anyway, thanks everyone for watching. Hope you're enjoying the content. And as always, good luck with your solving.